Hi, I'm Lita Lepens. And I'm Jim Gordon. Welcome to another edition of Our City Tonight. We are in West Vancouver. I'm embarrassed to admit, I rarely come over here, but we're in Ambleside, correct? Yes, Ambleside's gorgeous. Well, in fact, I'm over in West Van a lot for friends, and in fact, my my cousins were in Dundrave. I grew up kind of here. And it's so nice to be back in this area. It is. I always forget, like, we've got a busy marine drive here, but just a few feet this way, we've got a lovely Ambleside Beach. It's gorgeous. Bridge, yeah. of course, Lionsgate in the background. But why are we here today? <laughs> We're here today because OEB Breakfast Company opened up a wonderful new restaurant here. We filmed in Brentwood and we filmed in the Yale Town. Um, location, but now we're here in West Vancouver, and it's just a beautiful spot. I can't wait to get into their food. They're also going to do some cocktails. That's all coming up after you watch this. Well, we are inside OEB in West Vancouver at the Ambleside location and uh, very excited to try some new cocktails. I'm with Daniel from Auckland and I'm, Jim said I was supposed to tease you about being a Kiwi and knowing your drinks, but should we even do? Well, anyways, we're gonna jump right in. Um, OEB always has a great cocktail program and um, I think you're definitely definitely onto something with these two new ones as well. So tell us a bit more about each one. Certainly. Uh, so they're part of our new uh, brunch cocktail, Happy Morning Hours, uh, which we're rolling out in the middle of June. Uh, this one is our Ola Paloma, which is tequila, lime juice, uh, grapefruit, little hint of salt in there just to give it a bit of punch. Uh, and it's perfect for the patio. Uh, Kathy whips up a beautiful one. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, this one, mm -hmm. yes, I did have a sneak, I snuck a you little, snuck a little pup. taste yep. last uh, when she was actually making them. Uh, tell us more about this Perfect. beautiful one. Uh, it's called the Brunch Punch. Uh, again, it's coconut rum, mango juice, a little pomegranate, some lime, and some pomegranate seeds, as you'll see in there. Uh, super refreshing, really light, uh, very crushable. Yeah, took me right back to my university days yeah. with my girlfriends, uh, but this is the adult version. Absolutely. I'm all grown up and yeah. I can enjoy that on the patio, Definitely. for sure. Um, now, I'm very familiar with your mimosas. These are throughout all your locations. Tell us the, uh, the different flavors that someone can get on a mimosa flight. Absolutely, so it's a great way to try all of our mimosas that we have on as a full version as well. Uh, these are our orange, grapefruit, pineapple, and mango. Uh, and it's a great way to start. Um, we have a wonderful cocktail program, so there's certainly other drinks here. Uh, we're not just brunch, we do a little bit of everything. You uh, do, and um, do you change the cocktails very often? Uh, there's a seasonal change of a few, and we definitely roll out a few promotions like this at various times of the season. Uh, as soon as the sun comes out, it's a great opportunity to do something like a happy morning hours. Wonderful. Uh, sit on the patio and enjoy a cocktail. You have a great patio here too. Yes. It's such a beautiful space and uh, so I'm gonna take a taste, another taste of this one. Um, cheers, cheers to Daniel. And we're gonna come back with Chef to taste some of the great new food items as well. Oh, cheers. cheers. Well, we're still here in Ambleside, but we're gonna head back downtown where we usually are for more content on Our City Tonight. This segment is sponsored by the Richmond Sentinel, providing news, entertainment, and human interest stories in print and online. She is a five-time YWCA Woman of Distinction nominee. She's a speaker, a writer, dance instructor, radio host, yoga instructor. She's an actor and a medical Qigong therapist. 
but she's best known as founder of Beauty Night Society. They are celebrating 22 years of helping women who live in poverty. I want a big welcome to my friend, Carolyn McGilvery. I've been trying to get you on the show for <laughs> so long. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, you are just... You do so much. I don't know how you manage to do that and still look uh, as vibrant. <laughs> you should be exhausted. <laughs> oh, it's great. Now, I want to jump right in and talk a little bit about, uh, I guess I could say your cultural history, because you are quite the talented artist. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Truth. Thank you. Um, with that, I grew up singing, dancing, acting, a lot of musical theater. And then from there, just out of curiosity, have just kind of explored so many different avenues. And yeah, I know it's going to sound weird. I really should have been a cat because I've <laughs> let curiosity help me through life. But you've excelled at so many things. And um, we are going to talk a little bit about, obviously, Beauty Night Society. Um, that is probably one of the most fascinating organizations and celebrating 22 years, I'm going to just have you talk about the beginnings of that, um, helping women in need. Sure. Um, I started volunteering because I was doing research for a short film project and started volunteering in the downtown east side, which has been dubbed the poorest neighborhood in all of North America per capita. And one night, one of the women came in who had been dealing with a lot is probably the most polite way to put it. And she didn't want to speak. She didn't want to eat. And when I finally said, what would you like? She said, I just want to feel clean. So we got her toiletries, a towel, fresh clothing so she could have a shower. Mm. Afterwards, she was trying to style her hair. There was a curling iron there, but her arm was so battered she couldn't get her arm up. So to be honest, I honestly think I did what anybody would do. I did her hair and we laughed a lot because I was really bad at doing her hair. <laughs> And after that, she gave me a hug and thanked me for making her feel human. So that's how it started. And I left there that night, not really sure what to do with that, other than it kind of blew me away and I felt very humbled. Yeah, and you started this society. Um, I love reading, there's so many articles on you um, celebrating the, the founding of this um, organization. And one of them is the healing power of a makeover, yet we were laughing. It's not It's not much to do with makeup. It's about healing touch. And what do the women receive there? Well, they, of course, get through the guise of a makeover. It really is healing touch. And I think especially since post-pandemic, I don't know, can I say post-pandemic? Yes, you can. <laughs> it, they actually officially announced that it's over. They right? did. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, with that, so many people um, have really, really needed touch, especially in the last three years where there hasn't been a lot of contact. But many of the women I work with have dealt with extreme violence. And I know during the pandemic, there was also what we call the shadow pandemic, where domestic violence and the opioid crisis, so both addiction as well as violence, increased. And so I think there's even more need for connection because so many people feel isolated and alone. There's also that reintroduction of healthy touch where it's not about control, it's not about violence. It's just about accepting somebody just as they are. And a lot of the conversations happen during there where people feel safe enough to open up. So we're able to refer them to shelters, transition homes, group homes, sometimes for meals, sometimes working with other organizations to create um, exit strategies for those who are fleeing violence, and sometimes um, helping them get on wait list for when a bed comes available for a treatment facility. Wonderful. Well, you've done some great work. Um, we will give uh, Carolyn's information at the end of the show in the credits so that can, people can find more about Beauty Night Society. Uh, I want to talk just the last little bit here about you're from journalistic royalty, <laughs> your parents. Uh, just a little shout out to your parents. Sure. Um, I'm born and raised here in Vancouver and my parents were too. With that, my dad was senior assistant managing editor at the Vancouver Sun. As a kid growing up, my dad's 
face was on billboards around town. Alex writes to Callum, readers eat it up, where he's smiling up at the waiter who's pouring red wine. And uh, with that, he used to be entertainment editor at the Vancouver Sun, and that was where he met my mother. She was, well, like that show, How I Met Your Mother, but very different circumstances. There used to be a nightclub here called the um, Marco Polo, and with that, they used to bring in all sorts of acts. Vancouver used to be known as Vegas North, where a lot of the acts would try here. And with that, they had their in-house dancers, which they called themselves the China Dolls. And my mother was, I know it's not a politically correct <laughs> now, but uh, my mother was one of them. My dad gave them a horrible review. My mom went to go tell him off. And somehow or another, she ended up getting on a date with him. And five years later, I was born. So <laughs> well, that's a lovely story. And I know you lost your dad a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but just great. Um, okay. Well, thank you, Carolyn. I really appreciate you being on the show. Um, again, um, more information on Beauty Night Society. Can you get the, um, the website real quickly? Certainly. It's beautynight.org. Okay, perfect, easy. And uh, thank you for all your amazing work in the community. And um, you can find out more about Beauty Night Society at that website. Thanks, Carolyn. Thank you. This segment was sponsored by the Richmond Sentinel, providing news, entertainment, and human interest stories in print and online. Well, we hope you're enjoying the show. We just want to take a moment to let you know you can reach us on all of our social media platforms, Facebook page, as well as Instagram. Send us any ideas you have or comments. Uh, we always love to hear from our viewers. Also, don't forget to check out our YouTube channel, Past Episodes, and it really helps us when you like and you actually join and become a member of the Our City Tonight YouTube channel. Subscribe. Subscribe is a word I was going to use, yes. <laughs> you know what we're talking well about. Well done, too. <laughs> Thank you. Good thing I'm on TV where words aren't important. <laughs> Back to the show. This Wine Moment is sponsored by Donna Paula, a premium Argentine winery crafted with attitude, distinguished by altitude. Uh, Martin Kaiser of Donna Paul yes. Estate Wines. Uh, he is the earth agronomic engineer. Well, actually what that means to us is he's a viticulturist and the winemaker of this amazing wine based in Argentina. Now I want you to tell us a little bit about where this winery is. Give us a really good picture as we show some pictures. Yeah. <laughs> well, imagine Argentina is a quite long country from north to south. So we are located in the center of Argentina, in the west. Okay. In the foot of the, in the foothills of the Andes, there is a huge up a range of mountains that yep. separate Argentina from Chile. And that's what your wines are named after, right? The yeah. elevation. So let's start with your Malbec and tell us how special this is and some of the details of this particular wine. Well, you know, Malbec is the most important red variety from Argentina mm -hmm. and it's also the case from Doña Paula. So our vineyards are located very close to the Andes, very high. Mm -hmm. And we have been looking for planting higher, getting more fresh climate and more intense sunlight. Okay, and how does that change the uh, flavoring? Changes a lot. Okay. In Argentina, yes. We get more black fruit, more floral notes, and uh, some herbs too. That makes the wine very elegant. Okay, I'm going to taste this one and let's talk a little bit more about this next one and the differences. Okay. So we're presenting here two different wines. This is a blend of, of Cabernet Franc and Malbec. And that's a, our icon wine that is a 100% Malbec. Okay. Coming from a very special spot of soil that has a lot of limes from. So um, Malbec changes and it's very sensitive to the water. According to the altitude, according to the type of soil, the wines changes a lot. So uh, Cabernet Franc is coming from a place 
called Gualtajarin, that is the highest region in Mendoza, and provides the, one of the best Cabernet Francs from Argentina. Mm. Uh, Malbec from that place are very special too. So making this blend with these two varieties makes a unique wine. Very unique, beautiful. I'm gonna taste this and um, yes. uh, do you have a favorite being the winemaker? Are you well, allowed to say? <laughs> we produce many wines, but these two are from my favorites. That's what I brought. Oh, that's one. Oh, that is beautiful. It's wow. beautiful, it's spicy, fruity, mm. has a good structure, but it's elegant. And okay, and as we finish, what would you pair this with? One thing, and what would you pair this one thing? Well, yeah, uh, I know there's many, I, but. I, I think this can go whenever you have uh, some spiciness in my meat, because mm. Cabernet Franc is quite spicy. Yeah. Um, Malbec for sure goes very well with a grilled meat, cook uh, with only salt because then you have the, all the flavor of the meat but uh, the, um, I would say a little bit sweetness and Malbec has a little bit of sweetness so it goes very well. Well thank you so much for spending some time with our city tonight here at the Vancouver International Wine Festival. It's been my pleasure. We have Martin Kaiser who is the viticulturist, the agronomic engineer yeah, of thank you. Donna Paula Estate Wines. Thank you very much. This wine moment was sponsored by Donna Paula, a premium Argentine winery crafted with attitude, distinguished by altitude. We're back here in Ambleside in West Vancouver, and we wanted to do a quick shout out to our valuable partners, the Richmond Sentinel, where we have one of our print versions of our TV show. That's right, you can check it out in hard copy, of course, and online, and we also want to send a special thanks to them for putting us on a recent cover. Oh, Jim, you're a cover boy now. Well, yes, at my age, that's something I've always been shooting for. Anyway, <laughs> check out the Richmond Sentinel online and in print. Okay, we're gonna head back inside to OEB, sample some delicious food. Well, back here at uh, OEB Breakfast Company in Ambleside in West Van. I'm actually enjoying this. I gotta start coming over here more often. Oh, absolutely. It's so easy to get here. It's <laughs> it is. over the bridge, Jim. <laughs> well, uh, over to this camera now, our guests we're about to introduce, but uh, when we were last here, Lita was sampling some great cocktails. Uh, welcoming young rising star, Chef Jordan joins us here to talk about some great food. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thanks for having me. You are quite welcome, sir. Mm. Okay, Lita and I have been dying to eat. We're gonna eat on camera, because viewers say we don't eat enough on camera. Okay, <laughs> tell us what we're starting with right here, sir. Okay, yeah, so the first dish that we have here, this is our uh, tuna crudo poutine. Uh, so the base of it is our herbed gaufret uh, fries, uh, tossed in our house-made potato seasoning, uh, and then tossed in our cilantro crema, topped with our marinated ahi tuna, diced avocado, uh, our poached eggs, and then it's finished with our citrus vinaigrette and our microgreens. Yeah, and talking about eggs, um, that's the beautiful thing about OEB is you have mm -hmm. a lot of partnerships with local yeah. farms, Canadian farms, mm -hmm. and that's where you source. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, our eggs actually come from uh, an OEB farm. It's Countryside Farms in uh, Manitoba. Um, they are on a strict flaxseed diet, so the diet that they're on is super healthy. The chickens are super, super uh, well taken care of, and the okay. eggs are of uh, great quality because of that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Always uh, tasty, and microgreens as well. I notice you always important. use on everything. Hey, let's go from uh, chicken to duck. Um, <laughs> this, I and mean, I'm honestly, I'm digging into this while you talk, so yeah. don't take offense. But Jordan, what are we looking at right here? Of course, yeah. So this is our duck confit crostini. Mm -hmm. um, so French rye bread on the bottom, chestnut puree spread across that, topped with spicy caramel, uh, pickled red onions, fresh pomegranate seeds, and our thinly shaved fennel tossed in a lemon olive oil dressing. Mm -hmm. And then that's all topped with our crispy duck leg, two poached eggs, 
smoked salt and micro watercress. Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot. It's, uh... You ask that. You ask the next question. <laughs> Just, yeah, no, and I know. Um, you also specialize, which is great, as is gluten-free options. There's tons of options when I come and yeah. dine with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, this is specifically one that's completely gluten-free in front of me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So our huevos in a burrito is completely gluten-free. Um, oh. We take allergies very, very seriously, seriously here, mm -hmm. uh, obviously. So we make sure that everybody's washing their hands and we're using separate pans and making sure everything's nice and clean. Um, but yeah, the uh, huevos, um, our slow cooked pinto beans tossed with our house made liquid egg, uh, wrapped in our flaxseed tortilla, and then that's all topped with our house made guac, sour cream, our microgreens, and then our blistered chichito peppers. Oh, Are you delicious. going to uh, Oh, I, an okay. Taste yes, or? I will. As June <laughs> says, the next question, I do have to taste this, has been sitting in front of me. One of the things we always like to ask chefs when we're on the show is mm. about the menu and not getting complacent. You guys are really mm. conscious of that with your, your mm. customers. Um, yeah. How often are you changing the menu? Is it seasonal uh, or yearly? What? Yeah, it's uh, it's more of a seasonal thing. So we're switching between summer and fall menus, um, kind of you know, introducing different flavors that are going to suit that season. So you know, in the winter time, going into a little more heavier items, right. things that are going to be a bit more filling. And then in the summertime, we're looking for uh, lighter dishes like the tuna crudo. Mm. And your presentation is always spectacular. It's beautiful. Oh, Definitely artwork here. Thank you. Well, you know what? Uh, we are going to dig in. I know we always say that on camera, but uh, we're going to come back and wrap up the show in just a few minutes with another guy who's been on our show many times from OEB. A reminder, you can email us your thoughts and questions at info at OurCityTonightTV.com. Also, don't forget, you can still reach us through Instagram and Facebook. Well, there's a look at one of the very first episodes of Our City Tonight in 2015. Now, back then, the show was 10 minutes long and online only. TV was still a year away. Well, that ties in with a little celebration we have every summer as we begin a new year of our show. This one will be the beginning of our ninth year. This month also marks the 150th TV episode of Our City Tonight. We want to thank all the viewers, sponsors, and guests, friends, all of you who have been a big part of Our City Tonight's longevity. We thank you and here's to year nine. Thanks for watching. Okay, uh, we had some promos right there, Lita, but we're back at OEB uh, with a guy who's been on our show a number of times before. Rob, great to see you again How at this you? new location. Fantastic. Tell everybody what your big shot title is here. <laughs> great. Uh, managing partner uh, for OEB in British Columbia. <laughs> There we go. No, and you, you keep opening these really successful uh, locations, and I, Little Birdie told me there's a new location that people are going to be very excited about. Yeah, so uh, along with, you know, Ambleside in, in North Vancouver that's opened since we've last spoken, we opened uh, in Langley, and uh, in this fall, we are going to Victoria. Gosh. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be amazing. Perfect market. Hey, let's talk biz. Um, uh, one of the things that Lita and I love when we first were introduced to you, uh, you are on our show, I think three years ago, mm -hmm. was just your whole business philosophy. For people who don't know OEB well, let's talk about the company and, and everything that you guys stand for. Yeah, so I mean, we are, we're an elevated brunch concept, elevated breakfast. We believe in the ingredients that uh, we put into our food. Uh, it's about our, our relationships that we have with our, our farmers and uh, the quality needs to match what we want people to experience in our restaurants. So being able to understand farmers waking up at four, three or four in the morning, uh, tending to their vegetables, their fruits, their produce, their the things that they make and farm, it's fantastic. And, and for us to be able to do the same thing and take those ingredients and incorporate it into our dishes, our elevated dishes, it's great. 
And it's nice because people think of breakfast as like, I know a lot of people that are like, I don't go out for breakfast. I can do it at home. You cannot do <laughs> any do this of home. this at home. This <laughs> yeah. is definitely elevated, as you said. And it's interesting, right? You can get you can get your classic breakfast at OEB with two amazing mm -hmm. uh, hen eggs from our farm, our countryside farms, uh, our bacon and our, our tallow fried potatoes and our organic Canadian uh, breads and toasts. But you can also do the duck uh, crostini or the tuna crudo. Mm-hmm or the huevos in a burrito. So you get your choice of being able to, to go elevated or even just get something that warms your belly. And I love that there's no judgment about having morning cocktails. You have the happy hour morning and that is so important. Then thanks to Daniel for introducing us to some of those. Happy hour does not start at uh, four o'clock. It starts <laughs> at uh, 9 a.m. and preaching to the choir here. Yeah. Uh, speaking of cocktails, uh, of course, uh, Daniel was on uh, the show earlier talking cocktails, but you also have some other alternatives too. One that I love. Tell our viewers about the beer mosa. Yeah, so we've got, <laughs> uh, you know, our cocktail program isn't just uh, a mimosa and a, and a Caesar. Uh, it's some of the ones that Daniel featured earlier today, uh, the Ola Paloma and the uh, Brunch Punch, but uh, back one of your favorites, I believe, is the, the Beer Mosa. Beer Mosa, yeah. Uh, it's fantastic, fresh juice, uh, beer, uh, amazing flavors in there, yeah. really brings it to life. Yeah, and uh, they had to talk me into it, folks, because I thought, no, I don't want those two meeting, but I, I've been sold ever since, so. Excellent. <laughs> hey, one last question too. You talked about uh, the local element to your restaurant. You also make a point each year of taking some of the staff and people you work with out to the various areas to let them see people in action doing their job. Huh? Yeah, you know, we started a couple of years ago where we realized what a great connection it was to get the chefs and, and the bartenders to go to uh, the, our farm partners and actually see what the farmers are doing, whether it's uh, Andrew from the Honey Bee Center going and learning all about uh, the honey that we use in our yeah. in our in our dishes or going to the blueberry farms and, and picking blueberries for the, for a couple of weeks and uh, actually using those blueberries in our dishes. Mm -hmm. uh, we get to do a, a ton of those things with every year and uh, it, it's just really gets you connected and grounded to, to what you do. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly uh, shows in all the dishes and all the all the new dishes that come out too. Very creative uh, group and minds behind OEB. By the way, it stands for over easy breakfast. I know people ask me that and it's uh, yeah, I always have to try and remember that. <laughs> uh, come check this uh, latest location. Uh, we should say you are steps from the beach and the water and the wonderful shopping and the busyness of Marine Drive. They're located right between it and Ambleside. I go over to West Vancouver. Thank you, Rob, for having us. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Lita. Thanks. Pleasure. Come check this place out. We'll have all the details in the end credits. I'm Jim Gordon. And I'm Lita Leapins. We will see you on the next edition of Our City Tonight. Let's eat. <laughs>